Issues that uh, we will know for sure about that uh, may be by tomorrow. Because what we have uh, done is to send out a questionnaire to member states to tell us uh, which doc uh, agreements they are going to sign. There will be three documents which are uh, expected to be signed. <coughs> Excuse me. One is uh, the draft agreement uh, establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area with its, four, uh, with its three protocols. Then the other one is uh, the protocol for movement uh, of people, right of establishment and right of residence. And the final one is uh, the Kigali uh, Declaration. For those member states that may not be able to sign the legal uh, instrument uh, establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area. So we expect uh, the, return, the uh, questionnaire to come back by tomorrow. All right. Yes. So we'll definitely but, but. Uh, when you're talking to delegates, a lot of them have emphasized on the need to ensure that um, this is a successful uh, uh, conference, uh, extraordinary summit, and they've emphasized that we owe it to our forefathers and mothers, we owe it to ourselves, and we owe it to future generations to create the Africa we want. Right. So there's that resolution. So it's definitely not tied to 2022. We should see that. No, as no, a I, I, I foresee a lot of signatures. All right, yes. perfect. Um, let's um, uh, compare it to something that uh, UNCTAD has done. Uh, we know UNCTAD as well is very yes. instrumental in your conversations. But they did a modeling showing the real gains that uh, mm. might be gained from elimination of some of these tariffs. Mm. And they pitted it, uh, the to total welfare gains for the continent, 3.6 uh, mm. billion for, mm. uh, against around 21 billion for the reduction of non-tariff measures. Mm. How close is the um, projection uh, with the, the AFCFTA or the Commission? How close is it to what UNCTAD is doing? No, no our own study is, is too under, uh, has been commissioned. Mm. Uh, we have consultants doing that uh, study. We expect it to come, uh, uh, I think, uh, by June right. uh, at, at the latest. Because you see, that study will really be useful now when we go into the detailed. Uh, tariff reduction negotiations right. among member states. Because right. we are now establishing the framework and protocols, but the real work comes later. Right. Another point of concern has to be the non-tariff barriers. Now, this has been discussed mm. every time we talk about the signing that's supposed to happen, the NTBs are mentioned. Mm. But how are you moving away from the narrative that the NTBs are just a bigger part of the broader inter integration? We have, uh, we have the part, we have an annex on the non-tariff barriers. Mm. Uh, so that's how serious we are. Right. We have a specific annex addressing issues on how to resolve non-tariff barriers. Right. And we have also uh, emphasized the point that uh, quality infrastructure, infrastructure issues, sanitary and phytosanitary uh, issues, should not be used as non-tariff barriers. Right. That is uh, the second step. The third step is that uh, we are about to roll out a trade facilitation strategy which will deal with, with those questions so that it helps us the, uh, implement uh, the WTO agreement on the trade facilitation. Right. Okay. Um, in regards to the mandate now that the other blocks, uh, the regional blocks have, mm. uh, should we see any dissolution of that? We have no, it's too early to, to think about it, that. Uh, when we started the negotiations in, uh, in 2015, we came up with the principle of a key. By that, uh, we meant that uh, the regional economic communities uh, will maintain their institutional arrangements and programs uh, uh, during this process. That question will come when we establish the African Customs Union, when we are going to have uh, a common external tariff. That's when we are going to address uh, the, that issue. So now we are just in the early phase. First, we, s we, we bring into existence the free trade area, we let it work, and uh, we see the progress on the uh, tough uh, liberalization. Then we say we are satisfied, we go to the African Customs Union, right. and that's when it will come. Now, part of the work, the good the work they are doing is that um, when we go to detailed negotiations on the uh, tariff reduction, we're not going to do it country by country. We're going to use it on the basis of existing arrangements in the, the regional economic communities. Right. So they're going to play a critical role. All right. 
right. Uh, now, we need to also be clear to the African population or anyone re uh, viewing this that signing might not necessarily mean that everyone is on the same page. This has been clear with um, the singular African air transport market that mm -hmm. was signed mm -hmm. just the other day. Mm -hmm. But after that, we saw the airline operators in Nigeria come mm -hmm. out and say that it will reverse the entire process that they've been trying to do to diversify the economy after mm -hmm. the recession. So how do you ensure that a quality control or national control that whatever is signed is actually everyone on board, not any political ties. You know, it's very important to uh, to have um, uh, to, to have um, uh, consultations. Broad-based uh, consultations are very, very critical and very, 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 very imp important, so that everybody is involved to promote the spirit of inclusiveness. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, it's also very important to look at the bigger picture. When we are creating the African continent of free trade area, we are moving away from a small market, maybe of 120 million people, or 100, uh, in some countries you find that the population is 3 million, to a market of 1.2 billion people. Right. So what it means that uh, the market players need to reposition themselves and to see how can we uh, take advantage of this larger market. Um, between, so within that same context, 14% to mm. over 50% by 2022, we just have four years to go. Mm. How realistic are your projections? 14% of what? 14% intra-African trade. No, no. Right now, the figure is uh, about uh, uh, 17 to 18%. Right. If we do uh, a, a tariff reduction, uh, we expect uh, an increase of 53.2% by 2022. Right. Now, if we are very effective on, uh, 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 on non-tariff measures, right. it will double. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So the possibilities are there. What matters is a strong commitment by all the market players. And it's for that reason that today, tomorrow, we are bringing in the business sector to see the opportunities that are there right. so that they can really be our advocates to say, let's speak to, the, uh, uh, to all the stakeholders to look at the big picture. If we utilize these opportunities, right. We have opportunities to generate additional employment opportunities. And when we do that, then we are also contributing to the growth of the African middle class. And when we grow the uh, African middle class, there are possibilities of strong consumption, right. from basic consumption goods to housing. Uh, to, to housing. And the modern economy thrives on strong consumption. When there is reduced consumption demand in an economy, the economy fosters. Mm -hmm. So we are laying a strong foundation for a stronger African economy. Right. We were seeing a bit of a shake-up, obviously, because we're seeing the different parts of the uh, continent uh, stewarded by the countries there. And Nigeria was a point of concern when we saw that Buhari might not come, could come, might not come. Mm -hmm. You'll clarify on that. But we understand their concern because some countries are worse off depending on what percentage of tariffs. No, no, uh, I think the first point is that most of the countries that are not signing, it's not, they are not totally dismissing. Right the project, the African Continental Free, uh, Free Trade Area project, they need time to consult. Most of them, they said they need time to consult. And some of them have constitutional requirements which need them to take the agreement through a certain steps before they, they come on board. And the principle we are working that <coughs> those who are ready can go ahead and sign. And immediately we, uh, we have a, a good number of countries that we have uh, signed. Again, we say those who are ready can go ahead and ratify. Right. Mm -hmm. Then the others who are still undertaking consultations can still come on board. Because the entire pro the project is for all the 55 African Union member states. It's not closed. Yes. Okay. 